why, you know, what is it? And I, and I think that it's a lot of sociological, uh, social problems um, that could be really responsible, partially responsible for people looking for alternatives to what they have, you know, experienced from the American society, at least the ills of it. As part of the freedom, right, is the drug use. It's, uh, it's what I witness is teenage pregnancy. Uh, what I witness is, is the smoking the marijuana. Uh, what I witness is the uh, disconnect with the educational uh, institutions. Uh, is being essentially lost. So I think part of that you have to look around and see. Well, and then as I mentioned in the beginning, the the, the blunt racism. These could be stimulants that are pushing people more and more to seek alternatives and to seek answers. Uh, once again, part of what Obama is saying, right, that he represents change. Uh, and, and so why, why is this appealing? Why change different, right? You said, well, I, I want something besides the same old uh, suit or what have you. So I, I, I think that's, that's part of um, you know, some of the reasons. Uh, I'm married, I have two children. Um, I was raised uh, primarily by my single mother. Um, I came from the South, and you'll find that uh, this story is very typical typical of African Americans. You know, them being somewhat, having the need, okay, well I have to do something about my people, my community, uh, you know, so then they you know, may come across uh, out of our from Malcolm X, or we have uh, other groups that are more sort of nationalist, and that appeals to them uh, simply because of the social, you know, um, position of African Americans. Um, so just to kind of speed it up a little bit, I grew up primarily on the north side of Chicago. Um, I went to Miami Tech uh, Public School, and from there I feel like I went to uh, all the universities. I went to York City as an undergrad. I um, went to DePaul as a graduate work, and as I said, I'm here at Loyola, um, uh, uh, finishing up, hopefully finishing up my uh, doctorate degree. Uh, how long ago, and how and why did I come to Islam? As I said, it was, um, or maybe I didn't say, I officially converted in 1990, so it's been 16 years, um, and without a doubt, if you were to say why, it's a net it's a blessing from Allah. Because as many people that I have talked to, both Muslim and non-Muslim, to you know, share the beauty of Islam, both Muslim and non-Muslim. As we know, there's many Muslims that may choose you know, to be really far away from Islam, not praying, not following their tenets. So you may find yourself actually doing dawah to, to Muslims. It's, I think it's one of those things where no one can really explain why. Uh, I consider it, as I said, a blessing uh, from Allah. Uh, because you could say the same words to person A as you say to person B. But, me, but person B may never convert. Person B may never start praying, fasting, etc. It's one of those questions that uh, we can try to come up with tactics uh, to appeal to a person such as, well, death, uh, well, such as uh, the text of the Quran. I can say, well, the Quran, there's never been a study to say that it has changed, to say that it's not in its original form revealed over 1,400 years ago. I can point out that. I can point out different sociology classes where I've sat in and they've said, well, of course the, the Bible has changed. Uh, of course, the Bible does not exist in its original form. Um, I can point. I can point to no study saying that about the Quran or any inconsistency. But it could not necessarily be enough for somebody to do the research themselves. So why does someone work? Why do I can work? I mean, I'm, I'm 16 years old. <laughs> I'm, I'm like uh, two years into high school, uh, and even when I convert. It's still very difficult to come out of that socialization. That's what the brother talked about. The socialization, um, I would say, 
this whole life is but sport and play. My, my whole point would be pleasure. It would be either to um, look at women figures or to, to, to get high or whatever. Um, so, you know, what would bring someone out of that? Uh, without a doubt, you know, it's dealing with the ideas. But what would make someone listen and think and do the research? You know, that's a very difficult uh, question to answer. Um, so I would say that one verse uh, that's in the Quran where Allah says, uh, He says, كَيْفَ تَقْفُرُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَكُنْتُمْ أَمْ وَطَنْ فَحْيَكُمْ تُمَّا يُمِتُكُمْ تُمَّا يَحْيِكُمْ تُمَّا إِلَيْهِ تُرَاجَعُونَ uh, which uh, can be the, the meaning can be translated as how can you reject the faith in Allah seeing that you were without life and He gave you life and then He will cause you to die and will again bring you to life and again to Him will you return and no one can challenge that they um, will die so you know as I mentioned the many social uh, problems that I observe which you know Malcolm X words appeal to me the seeking of change the rational proofs uh, the fact that uh, the Quran's challenge if you believe this is not from me God produce something like it there's never been a study to refute that the Quran is not from that which it claims to be which is from Allah al khalaq the creator of the universe and everything there's never been one and if you read the book, it's full of consistencies. And I think more importantly for me, a practical guy. So for example, Quran says, drinking alcohol is haram, is unlawful. Well, as someone who wasn't practicing Islam before Muslim, I could see, wow, when I drank, I was out there. I could have done anything. I could have killed somebody. Who knows when you're intoxicated? I could have called uh, HIV. I could have, uh, you know, these real practical things. So Quran says, well, drinking is unlawful. Uh, the Quran says, gambling is, is, is unlawful. Uh, Quran says, interest, usury, is haram. Well, wow. <laughs> I mean, we, we look at the, the situation that happened with the housing market through the bank banking system. And so wait a minute, this is not just this is not just blind faith. This is something where I can look at the text of the Quran in this context and values and I can look at the un-Islamic society and I can look at the system, I can say, no, it's I'm alhamdulillah, it's a nitma, it's a blessing while Muslim. It's not blind faith. It's not a, a mere religious uh, for me it isn't. And when you look at the verses uh, I don't, I don't think it's presented that way. Um, so this was the empirical uh, proof for me, which was Quran itself. The next question is, how has Islam, or how has your life changed after Islam? Well, as I kind of uh, alluded to, um, Islam is a concept maker. And this is something that I would say, to me, it's been a continuum. It's been a continual process of really understanding when you read books they'll say Islam is complete way of life. Well what does that mean? Well, okay, well there's marriage, there's Islamic way of marrying, um, there is uh, when you go to the to the bathroom, there's a you know there's a uh, dua you make, you make look but it, it goes deeper than that. Uh, and that uh, Islam is a norm and value, is a concept maker. Uh, because the Quran is dealing with every aspect of your life. Uh, not just the mere rituals. It's also dealing with uh, the economic aspects of your life.